<laughs> What's up guys, welcome to another broken episode. I'm getting kind of tired of saying that. <laughs> We're heading into week five now of my messed up shoulder. But uh, I do have a trip to Albuquerque coming up next week, four hour drive to get to a real VA hospital where they have like actual doctors and shoulder specialists and people that can help me instead of saying, sorry, we can't do anything in your tiny little mountain town. <laughs> I digress. So since I'm still kind of inactive and not doing too much photography right now, um, another studio episode. A lot of you guys have been asking about this since I've got the R6 Mark II. And if you're new to the channel, I've been doing some wildlife with it uh, and I really love it. I've got a full review that I'm still working on for not just wildlife, but just kind of the R6 Mark II in general. Uh, still working on that. It's going to be a minute, but definitely making progress with that. Uh, anyways, a lot of you guys have asked about the wildlife specific stuff, how I'm setting my R6 Mark II up. And uh, some of you guys have either have an R5 or an R6 or an R7, or you've seen my R5 and R6 for wildlife setup. Uh, it is kind of similar to that, but there are a few new things with the R6 Mark II. So let's just go ahead and jump in there and I'll walk you through how I've got everything set up. I will note that don't take this as like, you know, written in stone or like the, the last word or anything like that because I'm still figuring this camera out and I'm still kind of figuring out what settings uh, I'm liking or not liking or getting used to. So I will uh, talk about some of those as I come up on them and how I you know feel about them so far, uh, but that may change in the future. But let's just go ahead and jump into it. I've got this little ghetto set up right here. <laughs> uh, I don't even, I can't even hold the camera right now. So, all right. All right. So first thing, uh, obviously is image quality. There is a bit of a buffer issue on this camera. That is, it's still using an SD card, so it's nowhere near as good as the R5. Uh, so that being said, I have it in C raw right now, but I'm actually going to go ahead and change it back to raw. And I had that in C raw because I was at uh, Bosque del Apache and I was shooting a lot of birds in flight. So I was, I, I hit the buffer quite a few times. So I went ahead and put it in C raw and that gave me a bit more buffer to work with. Though I did still hit the buffer even with the C raw a couple of times. I'm not typically one to shoot like hundreds of images in a row, um, but I do, especially with the birds in flight, I did want to get lots of sequences sequences and bursts. So go ahead and change that to C raw if you think you're going to be doing a lot of uh, bursts. I haven't noticed like any practical or like noticeable substantial differences in terms of image quality between the C raw and the raw. Obviously there is a little bit, but Practically speaking, was all I'm saying. Like, I haven't noticed any issues with that. Like, all of these images that I shot in C Raw, I think, have come out totally fine. Uh, and been, I've been able to edit them just fine and push them and, you know, color correct, color grade, all that stuff. Since we're in here, we'll notice the cropping aspect, and I have it in full. So, you can set this to uh, the 1.6 times crop and that will give you, um, just like the R5 and the R6 both do it, that will crop in 1.6. And because there's the extra four megapixel images on here, it tells you when you do that. Um, so check this out. I have my DP button, which you can't see. That's the button in front of the ring. And I don't want to move the camera because I don't want to pick it up. Um, but that's the button on the other side. I have that set to control my aspect ratio. So when I want to put it in crop, I can just hit that with my ring finger right here and there it is. And then it look, it shows you 9.3 megapixel is what my image will be. I'm personally, I'm totally fine with that. I'm not obsessed with megapixels, like a good portion, a good unhealthy portion <laughs> of consumers are, uh, or photographers. I personally, that's enough for me. It's enough for my social media. It's enough for my website. And it's even enough for me to print if I want to print a decent size. So 
we're not going to go into that. We're just going to suffice it to say that I'm personally comfortable with that, uh, with cropping in like that and still having enough megapixels. But I'll go, up, I'll go ahead and set it back on full. All right, so here's the first thing. Um, obviously, too, I set up my back button focus, my dual back button focus, uh, and we'll go over that in a minute. Um, but I put this in drive mode, and normally I'll have it in like the high speed continuous, or if I want to get crazy, the high speed continuous plus. And then I had it in electronic shutter previously because I was shooting some birds that were really close and really timid and I was in a blind, so wanted to be quiet. Um, I've been leaving it in electronic more often and still dealing with the rolling shutter. The rolling shutter on the R6 Mark II is better than the R6 and slightly better than the R5, so I'm happy with that. And I've finally gotten used to dealing with the electronic shutter. So if you don't want to deal with rolling shutter though, you can put it in the mechanical or the first curtain. Here's the stuff that most people want to know about. So we're going to start with AF operation. I always leave mine in servo and that's because of the back button focus that I have set up. And I always leave mine in the spot AF. Uh, and again, that's because I do more than wildlife. I do landscape and all this stuff too, and we'll see why that's important here in a little bit. I have it on animals because I'm mostly shooting animals, but the auto, I will say, um, I've actually left it in auto because I bought the R6 Mark II for Camera Lady so that she can film me for the YouTube videos because we've been filming them on the R6. Uh, and there's a, a ton of significant upgrades for us in the video world that we were totally cool upgrading from the R6 to this. And one of them is definitely the auto subject detect. That has been very handy for us because that allows her to not have to worry about things if she takes the camera from me and then films me or if I go out with it uh, after we've filmed a YouTube video and want to do some wildlife photography or whatever. It's very handy for us. All right, so the cases. This is again, like they have the auto case now. And I think that does a pretty fine job for most things. I haven't had an issue. I've left it in auto for a while and you know shot animals and birds and all that stuff and it's been fine. Um, but what I typically leave mine on is case one. And then if we come in here, and then if we come in here to the rate button, I have dropped my tracking sensitivity and my acceleration, deacceleration tracking down to minus one. And that is each. So that helps it to lock onto a target and hold that target, even if something uh, tries to break through, like if the bird flies behind a tree or if another bird flies in front of it or whatever, um, this will just help it be a little more sticky on that. And I'm, that's kind of where I've been happy with the setup. So you can mess with that if you want to. I haven't really, I haven't really had a need to do any of the other cases because this has been doing totally fine for me. Um, sometimes I change the magnification. So by default, it, I don't remember what it was set on by default, but I, sometimes I just put it to something that works a little better for me. So I would just experiment with that. If I like to double check things on the back of the screen a lot. I like to zoom in, especially for small birds and see if they're sharp, see if they're in focus and all that. So messing with the magnification to get it to somewhere that you like uh, can definitely help. And I do it from the focus point. So that's really handy too. I have that set that way. Okay, so here's the thing about the electronic shutter. So if you have it in electronic shutter mode, you can come in here. Normally I disable the beep because that was the worst thing ever to put in a camera, especially for a wildlife person. Uh, but you can come in here and enable the beep now and you can come into the volume and this is where the power is. So I can put everything else, like I can drop it down to zero and then I can put the shutter volume down to one or whatever. And that'll have just the littlest of the shutter volume to help you if you're in electronic mode know that you're taking a picture because if you've never used electronic shutter before or even if you have but you just don't think about it sometimes you know you're half pressing and sometimes you do a little more than half press and you end up 
filling your card and the next thing you know you're you hit your buffer and you don't even know why and then the next thing you know is your 128 gig card is full <laughs> so you can fix that uh, by or at least you can aid yourself in giving you that audio all right so let's come in here and go to custom buttons and i'll show you how i have my back button set up so we're just going to come in here and we're going to by default it's like this so we're going to take the af start off of the trigger button the shutter button and do it only to metering start and then we're going to come down here and this is where i have a few different things set up so on my star button which is right here i have it set for the eye detection on so that'll start the eye detection for the animal eye detect or auto or whatever you have it in, that'll start the eye detection. So then I have for my AF on button right here, I have this set to the regular metering and AF. And because I'm keeping that in servo mode and single point focus, um, that's what's giving me this single point. And I can move that point around wherever I want with this joystick and then I can hold it to lock onto something, and if I let it go, that's treating it like it's a one-shot. So that's great for landscapes because if I want to put it anywhere and focus on this little thing right here, boom, I can hit that, let it go, and then I'll know that it's in focus, and then I can let it go, and it won't, it won't try to autofocus anywhere else. So having that single point with the back button focus is really handy. It's also really handy for birds and wildlife and stuff when, not if, but when the IAF messes up uh, and it loses your bird or drops your animal or it can't find the eye or it's focused on their butt or whatever. It's not focused on the right animal or it goes through a stick or there's all kinds of situations where these IAF still messes up. When that happens, I revert to using the single point and putting it where I need to on the animal. And then I can go back and retry the IAF and it should lock on, you know, and at that point it should be fine. But that's why I have the dual button back focusing set up that way. Oh, one more, go into this number nine here, um, the display performance. I set that to smooth because that's much better, I think, than the power saving. So that's not a huge thing, uh, but that's there. And then last thing, if we scroll down here to the DP button, the, or the DOF button, that is where I have set to the uh, crop ratios. So now that I can just easily switch into my crop and easily switch back with the touch of my ring finger. So, all right, let me stop this. <laughs> ow, ow. Okay. Moving this shoulder is not cool right now. <laughs> all right, so that's pretty much in a nutshell how I have my R6 Mark II set up for uh, wildlife shooting, but also pretty much all of my other shooting because um, the way that I have that dual button, dual back button focus really allows me to shoot what I need to uh, in any situation and I'm totally cool with that. You know, there's a ton of different ways you can customize these cameras and I'm not saying that my way is right, I'm just saying that y'all wanted to know how I do it and that's how I do it. So if you have any questions about any of that, uh, leave them in the comments below and I'll definitely answer them. If I missed anything, let me know uh, and I'll hit you up in the comments. So uh, if you're still here, thanks for watching. I super appreciate it. Hopefully I will be back out in the field with some more uh, wildlife, landscape, astro, all the goods soon. Uh, if my shoulder doesn't get fixed soon, I basically am going to have camera lady do everything for me. <laughs> uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, but thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.